Everybody, welcome to Falcon Spotlight Sunless Sea. Now this is actually a game I'm really, really excited for. Like, I kind of stumble upon it out of nowhere. Um, if you are familiar with the Sunless Lee, uh, Sunless, <laughs> Sunless Lee, Wow, that's really incredibly insensitive, Falcon, but no, if you're familiar with Sunless Sea itself, um, you do know this is basically the second game of the Fallen London, I guess, if you want to call it franchise, story, whatever. As you can see over here by the menu, you can play Fallen London, which is a web browser game that um, is basically the precursor to Sunless Sea. Sunless Sea is kind of like the um, follow-up to that. But um, it leaves the whole um, browser-based roots behind. But it does, I believe, incorporate some of the stories and lore into it itself. What's really interesting about Sunless Sea is it also has like a story editor in itself. So basically, people can go out, make their own stories and things like that to add to the game itself. Um, early access game right now, basically still being developed. A lot of features for the game itself aren't necessarily implemented just yet. But you can see where, uh, assuming the game continues the pace that it's going at right now. I honestly see this being like one of the really top games uh, in the future, at least in the in the market and whatnot. All that is said, let's actually get into the game here, and we're gonna start off a new game really quickly. Are you sure? I am definitely sure. Uh, the game is something along the lines, as you can see right there, some fucking giant squid monster. Again, this game actually incorporates a lot of my fears, which is the sea, the open sea, deep sea, you know, Cthulhu, ah, you know, who knows what's out there, right? I think that's what I really enjoy about the game. It has a really honest, like, creepy feel to it it's very as you can see right here it's very like text heavy think of something like you know neo scavenger for instance which i cover in my channel all the time or you know what else is really text heavy that i've covered uh you know it, there's a lot of games out there right but i'm saying it is a really text heavy game i think the best example would be indeed neo scavenger where there is a lot of like you know progressing going along but there is a really text heavy focus when it comes to combat and things like that the game itself does its own, had its own combat setup that I think was really interesting. Initially, I was a little bit overwhelmed by it, but we'll check that out as we go. When you start up the game over here, you basically have a chance to, you know, choose your own past or just, you know, start without, you know, anything in particular. Just to kind of give it a test, though, we'll go into choosing your own past. Right here, you can kind of read what is, whatever's going on. Do I want to be a street urchin? Um, this will give you a bonus to Veils, the skill of sub uh, subtlety, and evasion. And this basically works out in a sense to kind of, um, Keep enemies um, a little bit off, more off your radar when it comes to the open sea itself, because but the game really does take place in the sea itself. Uh, over here we have a poet. This will give you a bonus to pages, the skill of trickery and knowledge. And we also have a veteran of the campaign of 68. This will give you a bonus to iron, the skill of causing direct damage. So obviously it's like, you know, just like your basic uh, strength plus skill. You have an ordained priest will give you a bonus to hearts, the skill of healing and morale, and this will basically give you more HP, essentially. And we also have the mirrors one, which is the one that I like. Uh, the natural philosophers will give you a bonus to mirrors, the skill of detection and perception. The game is really based on being able to see your enemy before you could actually cause damage, because this open sea is completely dark out there. So we're going to go with that, and I'll, I'll expand on that really soon. Uh, your acquaintance, the plausible surgeon, will serve as the ship's doctor until you find someone better. And we got um, 25 mirrors, uh, we have the plausible surgeon, I've gotten 20 echoes, which is basically your currency in the game. You were a natural philosopher, now you're a Z-Captain. And you're a stranger, quality has gone, welcome to the world, alrighty. When you start off right here, it's going to give you like a few quests that you can undertake. As you can see, some of these are still locked, which have not been implemented just yet, which is unfortunate, but you know, again, the game is still very early access. And it does seem to be showing some progress in terms of updates, so a lot of this I'm pretty sure will become available soon enough. Uh, right here we have Fulfillment, which is Gather a Hundred Tales, Learn All You Can of the Z, which is what they call the C in this game. Uh, write a masterpiece and then retire. And, or do I want wealth? Well, I'm gonna go with some wealth, because, you know, who doesn't want some money, you know? Money, power, respect, bitch. Um, so we'll do that. And what are you, madam, sir, citizen, my lord? Let me go with my lord, man. You address me with some sort of respect. And who are you in occurrence? Um, your address of quality is now my lord. Excellent. This will let you choose your little um, character portrait here. Let's go with um, dude with the top hat and the mustachio over here. And we'll name him um, Mustachio Man. That's not how you spell mustachio though. Musta it's not mustachip. Mustachio Man. There you go. Except. Whatever. Who cares? <clears throat> so once you're ready to go... Um, before you take off, you want to get a few missions going on. You could go out there and explore. Again, the game has a really emphasis on rogue elements where it's like, you know, permadeath. However, the game also has a chance to let you save, which then essentially turns off rogue mode or, you know, mercy mode it turns on, which is what they call it in this game. So keep that in mind. 
Before we actually go out there, though, we do need a few quests, as I said. So let's go into London really quickly. Most of the things that you could kind of uh, access will be on the side over here. We'll go to London and we'll visit the Admiralty Service Office. They'll pay for the information from the captains. Find out what and how. And let's continue onward here. So ask if there's anything in particular they need. Well, if we can be assured of your discretion. So let's say, see if they need anything. Uh, speak to our agent here in return and we'll see what's rewarded. Visit the port below and return to London. You can check the details on your journal at any time. Retrieve strategic information from Galder's Morn to the Corsair's Forest east of London. This is basically the starting mission that you'll get 100% of the time so far. At least the times that I've tried the game myself. It's never failed to not happen. So I figure some of the missions are indeed um, not randomized. But just uh, I'm going to be there regardless of which. How you go about solving them no, is up to you. <clears throat> Apologize there. So, um, we got that quest going on. We could also visit the Admiralty Service Office. They'll pay for the information from Z Captains. Find out how. Well, we already read that. Continue in here. Um, we don't have an appointment because we need actually unlock with Admiralty favor no more than two. I don't think we have enough for that just yet. No, we definitely don't. So, let's actually just get back over here. We've already done that. Uh, Carries and Wolfstack Docks. This will reduce your terror. This might run into trouble or romance, but our terror meter is down to zero right now. When this fills up, obviously your um, crew will start going batshit and saying things like that, which you obviously know what's happening, you know, panicking and everything like that, so definitely want to ignore that. While we're looking at the UI, by the way, you also have to account for your hunger meter. Your dudes can go hungry out in sea, otherwise, you know, turn into cannibals or something like that. And we also have um, the engine power. This is your fuel. Um, the fuel's gonna be really important because if you get stuck out in the sea without fuel, you'll start drifting forever into, you know, you basically hit your demise. So, you wanna definitely wanna keep a hold of these things over here. Uh, you could hire on more crew. A low risk challenge. Your heart quality gives you a 81% chance of success. Let's actually do that and see if we could hire anybody. This will indeed cost us, um, 30 echo though. Um, your tall tales find a ready audience, scarred and seasoned men and women. Tramp aboard and find places to sting hammocks. So you've gained three crew members. Now we have 11. Perfect. That's never happened before. Usually it's only one. And um, it cost me 30 echoes. So, you know, that's pretty good. Alrighty. So basically everything over here is also set up by a set system of uh, percentiles, which really depends on your skills. Like, you know, the heart thing. Say I would have, um, my heart's over here at 27. Obviously, the higher that would have been up, the more chance I would have had of that succeeding. So basically, a lot of all this here is going to be based on your stats up here, which you got to keep an eye out and increase over time if you want to basically take on future quests and everything like that. So right now, let's actually... I think there's probably one more offer passage to the tomb colonist over here. And right now, we got two, three tomb colonists. There's a little bit of flavor text over here for you. Since I already know what that is, basically, <clears throat> you're basically offering passage to a few colonists that are heading up north. Alrighty, so we've done all that. Um, definitely a game that I really, I guess, advise for you to check out on your own. It won't be everybody's cup of tea, but if you're into games like, say, Neo Scavenger, I think you'll definitely like this. So, you gotta launch the game, right? Or launch the, not the game itself, but launch the boat. Once you're at C, you're looking at, you're looking at A and D to kind of uh, turn your perspective as to where you want to go. S will actually slow you down and bring you to a halt, and then you want to hit W twice to go as fast as you can. Now this is basically where the game can take a little bit of more of a tedious turn, and that's understandable, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but this is what you have to deal with, which is basically traveling from one port to another, or from one port to an island, or etc, etc. So keep that in mind, it's going to be part of the mainstay of the game, but you know, hey, you can't really control that, and at the same time, it kind of offers more of that, you know, captain of the sea type of feel. Right there, what was happening was this crab was coming at us, and instead of avoiding it, I wanted to show off some of the combat as well for you, so, um... It's a really interesting combat system how it works. At first, it kind of really took me by surprise and I couldn't figure it out, but then it kind of made sense. All right, so we're going to fight the zoo. You could also flee a very modest challenge, and it gives me a 77% chance of success, which is not that bad, but we do want to fight him. <clears throat> combat tips. You are trying to increase your enemy's elimination. This will tell you basically what you're trying to do for the combat itself. You are trying to increase your enemy's elimination, the yellow bar, by their portraits so you can see and damage them. They are trying to increase yours. So what's going to happen here as we continue... Here is the basic uh, battle system, and it's all in. It takes all place uh, once you unpause it, right? So right now we're paused mode. Uh, it gives you time to kind of think about how you want to go about this. Over here, you can kind of do emergency repairs and observe things like that. But what we want to do is, they have five health. We have seventy-five holes, so we're a little bit better than they are, or than it is, right? But at the same time, you want to illuminate them enough to be able to see them and then um, strike yourself. What I personally like to do is over here your attacks, right? You have the Devastating Salvo, which um, requires 100 Illumination. 
and based on iron, which is, you know, your strength. And it takes up 5 seconds to load up. The Sobble regularly, this one only requires 50 illumination, which is only half of this. Um, and the warm-up is 5 seconds, but it will indeed actually be less stronger than this one. Which makes sense, right? Less of a charge up and um, less illumination required. And we have the flares over here, which are based on mirrors, and that's your mirrors are gonna be right here. So, <clears throat> illuminates an enemy, but also illuminates the attacker. So this will actually give you an illumination as well, which is to the benefit of the enemy, but at the same time, you know, you do more illumination to them while they're trying to do the same to you, so keep that in mind. And you also have the potent flares, which is like a crazier version of that, but this also requires fuel, and you don't want to mess around with fuel. So. Right now we're going to go actually go based on flare, so we'll do maybe two of those, and then you could queue up your attacks. So let's just do that, those two first, and see if that gets me up to 50, and if it does, we'll send a salvo. And let's actually just press spacebar and let this happen. As you can see, this all then takes place by itself. A little bit of a series of countdowns and cooldowns and whatnot. So right now we use the first one, and it illuminated me up to some amount, but then he looked at me, and let me pause the game really quickly. I went up to 33, then he actually used his seek attack, and it brought me up to 38. So he himself is also charging up an attack. Right now he's at 57, which means that this is going to actually hit because it's over 50. So again, this requires over 50. This is at 57, meaning you're good to go. So we'll keep that going on. And he should, for the most part, stay up at um, over 50. And in one attack, we basically kill him. Not a big deal. Once you do beat him, though, you have a chance to either butcher it for supplies and food, or sometimes you could dissect it for knowledge. Um, Let's see. Your page requires 77 chances of success. Um... Or we could get some food. Let me go for some food. I guess my good dudes could, you know, actually do enjoy crab anyway. So, um, you've lost 33 hunger. Now three. Oh. So this actually lowered our hunger meter, which is unfortunate. I thought that, um, there's also some bats in the game. When you actually kill the bats, you have the same chance. But, um, when you butcher them, you could actually save the meat into your meter itself. So I thought this would be the same, uh, progress. But it wasn't. It actually just cured our hunger on the spot, which is... Not really ideal, because it wasn't really that high to begin with, but, you know, whatever. Live and learn, right? Now, as you're progressing down the sea over here, this logbook will tell you everything that you are discovering on the way. You want to increase your logbook because it gives you more information of your surroundings. Speaking of surroundings, let me open up the map over here really quickly. And this is the map. There's a lot to explore, as you can imagine. Right now, we're kind of heading down to this one. This is kind of like your guide point if you're trying to figure out where the fuck you should be going. You want to aim down over here, which is basically the first mission that we got. When you land in areas that you're not supposed to be there yet, like, say, Abby's Rock. Let me go in Abby's Rock just to give you an idea as to what happens here. <clears throat> and let me slow down while I'm at it so I don't really crash into the uh, port over here. By the way, you want to be careful about crashing this stuff because it could really ruin your hole. Um, you could really, really, really ruin your hole really quickly and at the same time cause you to, you know, fail the game, right? So keep that in mind. And Abby Rock, this wasn't our goal itself, but you could come in here and actually get some news and open up other quests and things of that nature. Abby Rock, a black split of an island from far anywhere anyone would want to go. I'm going to Abby Rock here. And yep, you could do some trade supplies. I didn't really harp on this when we were in London itself, but you know, if you go to shops, you could buy stuff, you know, more supplies, you could buy more crewmen, etc., etc. This is the offices that we have. We have the mascot, which is always there to my knowledge. And then you'll get a random, um, a random shipmate and whatnot. And this actually could increase. You get a lot more of these guys that have different aspects. The surgeon actually works as pages plus one and hearts plus one. But I've gotten other people that increase mirrors and strength, etc., etc. And this could actually expand more than just one dude, so keep that in mind. And the journal tells you basically what's going on in your setup at the moment. And it'll also be a good indication of your quests. Like right now we have um, something awaits you. Retrieve the strategic information from Gator Smore, which is our main quest. And somewhere over here, it should talk about the uh, dudes that were taking over to the um, the tomb colonists and whatnot. The hold will basically tell you what you can equip and your empty slots here, but we have no extra things to equip at the moment. And then the story is basically um, what you could do in certain areas of the game, like Abbey Rock, for instance. So let's go into Abbey Rock and uh, trade supplies. Resources are limited in this Black Rock. The Sisterhood will pay a fair price for supplies, not a good price, mind. Um, so unlock with one supplies. You have five. Let's go and see what's going on here. So the muscular. Prioress jingles with knives and pistols. She reckons every candle and coil of rope before she reluctantly counts all of your payments. So I lost one supply, but I gained 11 from it. So basically I sold one supply and got 11, which is a little bit more than you would get somewhere else would be like 10. One more echo, but hey, it's something at the very least. Uh, you could compile a port report. It's unlikely to be eventful. So this will basically increase your news if I'm right. Yeah, you now have a, a port report. And basically you want to turn in all these port reports to Fallen London. 
into the uh, administrator's office, I believe, and that opens up more quests for you, depending on how much information you do bring back. So, we'll do that. And we also have Knock on the Iron Studded Gates, although you have no recent news. And, yeah, I have no news right now to actually deliver them. Usually, news are actually used to reduce terror and, um, you know, enlighten other areas of um, certain events and whatnot. And the last thing we have is Watch the Covenant, Wait a While, and See. Exotic Refuse, the Covenant is silent, a few lights prick its bulk, bells sound the times of prayer. You're almost ready to give up when a, a side door opens. Your nuns march out, carrying something wrapped in a blanket and fling it into the sea. You creep down to examine it. It's, well, it was likely unidentifiable, even before the nuns used it for weapons practice. Now it leaks fluid from a dozen puncture wounds, but it's still small of the Z. It still smells of the Z. So now you have one stranger, so we have a strange catch, and that's all for now. That's the first time I've ever done that, so that's actually really new for me. Alrighty, so now I have a strange catch as well. But again, you basically gather some information from over here, and again, you'll more than likely unlock different quests. Oh, I need to launch. Remember to launch at all times. You can also turn off those lights, and I'm not sure if turning off your lights will basically um, keep enemies from spotting you from longer distance, I would imagine. So you could do that by ba, 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 clicking that over here or using the uh, appropriate actual um, shortcut for it. Now looking at my map, we should somewhere be hitting... Gilder's Morn, somewhere over on this side, if I'm right. If I remember correctly, anyway. The um, areas of the map don't change, so that's not going to be randomized like everything else is, though. Or, I guess, not everything, but some of the aspects that are randomized of the game itself. Is this Gilder's Morn, or no? It is not sure. But let me turn on my lights back on over here. Alright, no, this definitely is not it. So over here we discovered the depot, station number three. And again, you want to keep building this up, and this will basically open up more quests for you and more information on the world itself. And again, this is a lot of the Sun of the Sea is going to be really slow, basic uh, build up to everything. Again, you have to really manage your resources out in the sea. You have to kind of keep an eye out for enemies and things to that degree. So a lot of it will take a little bit of time. That right there should be a pirate boat. I don't think I've ever fought a pirate boat. I'm a little bit actually scared about the outcome of that. But before we actually get to Gilder some more, let me check out Depot A, which I've never also found before. So again, there's a lot of the map that I'm also unfamiliar with. So we're both kind of learning as we kind of uh, check out this game over here. So Station 3, we may have an infer a Station 1 and then a Station 2. We may conjecture a Station 4. <laughs> so again, the game's having a little bit of fun there. So let's check out the Station 3. Uh, train your telescope on shore. Might, as, uh, might be best to get a look from a distance. Unlock with no more than zero of a port report. Alrighty, so let's check this out. Alright, so we got another port report for Station 3 now, so that's good. That's two more port reports. I believe it required three to unlock something back in Fallen London. Uh, try the gate. The only way to pass the walls is unimposing but sturdy looking gate of triple bearer silvery metal. A sign beside it reads deliveries. Um, this unlocks with more than zero suit and copper. I don't think we have any of those, so that should probably work out. Uh, no. No, no. <laughs> if you return with a certain delivery, it was going to open. So, we don't have any of that. It says right there, um, zero, and we don't have any of it. So we can't do that. Uh, search for signs of other visitors. It never turns. It never hurts to know what you're up against. And this is a chancey challenge. This gives us a 60% chance of success. And let's actually take and see what happens. A few pages uh, torn from a logbook begin with a passage of music, a sweet low ch uh, children's tune. After that come many verses that take, that make no sense at all. They go on and on about purple fires and upside down houses, a fistful of roses the color of brandy and dolls with buttons for teeth, the soft glassy pelt of an octopus and the sweet juice of a brazel nut. By the end, you're humming along to yourself and it's terribly soothing the song. You now have 20 fragments, uh, that's all for now, and you succeeded in the mirrors, uh, or the challenge itself. So, there you go. Again, everything is, has like a set chance of uh, either happening or blowing up in your face, so luckily that kind of helped out there for us. And let me actually engage this um, pirate ship and see what is up over here to kind of give us a little bit more different aspect and kind of focus a little bit more on the battling system, which I think is really interesting itself. Uh, the pirate's frigate. Um, fr uh, fight. Well, let's actually fight them and see what's up. Alright, so they have the same amount of hull as we do and they have more crew, so I think we're kind of fucked for this one, but we'll see what happens here. Maybe it might give me a chance to use this evade for once, too. So let's actually start off by using some flares to eliminate them, and then we'll start busting up with some salvo here on Pasa Comet and see how this kind of goes about. Meanwhile, this happens, let me get a little bit of coffee to kind of suit my throat here. And they're actually using the same tactic that we are too, so these motherfuckers aren't messing around. Oh wow, okay, apparently I'm fighting myself right now. So we have a higher detection than they do, and oh yeah, we're gonna fucking die. <laughs> There's no question about it. We took a lot more hull damage than they, than they did, so meaning they have a better ship than ours, at least defensively, so that's not good to know. 
Uh, I can flee, or I could actually do some emergency repairs, which I could do with some supplies. Let's do that. Alrighty, so we actually got wrecked. Even before we could heal, they kind of destroyed us, and there you go. That is the end of our journey. <laughs> That was really unfortunate. Alrighty, but again, it goes to show a little bit of the whole building up process. Um, you shouldn't be fighting pirates this early on. Stick to the regular enemies which we have fought, like the crab. There's a giant crab which you might have seen on the map. There's also some bats. You want to stick to those. And then you can level up your ship and then upgrade it back in Fallen London, which is the reason why you're kind of getting a little bit of uh, more echoes to kind of do that down the line. I kind of wanted to fight these pirates because I've never done it myself, and now I know why it's a good reason to avoid them early on. But that's basically what Sunless Sea is at the moment. There's a lot of more stuff that I didn't really cover, but again, it's kind of more of a preview for the game itself. If you're interested in checking it out, though, I will have a link in the description. And again, kind of a game like I would, you know, say, it's kind of like Neo Scavenger, really text heavy, really, um, I guess story heavy in the sense that things only happen when you trigger them in a way otherwise it kind of lets you give it gives you a little bit of free roam where you kind of want to go out there and just kind of be the captain of the sea of the scary sea but the captain of the sea nonetheless and it's basically up to you to kind of make your own story in the process but again early access game a lot more to come i'm pretty sure but definitely keep an eye on this game i really do like it myself the music's really amazing, and again, the atmosphere is really mind-blowing. Either way, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, I encourage you to leave a thumbs up, leave a like. Either way, the support really does mean a lot, and I will catch you guys next time.